Hello and welcome back to the Django DRF and React series. So this one is just a small tutorial just to give you some general information which may be useful while you're developing or at least just uh, something that you can reference as you're moving from the front end to the back end. This can have much more bigger implementation or implication, sorry, um, in your development, particularly if, for example, you're developing in an environment that has front end developers and back end developers, and they need to be able to communicate. They need to understand what they're developing in the front end so that it can communicate to the back end. So having API documentation is obviously important for that. So if you're just making a small project and you've got a front end and a back end, this can also be useful to help you understand and just to remind yourself what you need to actually develop in the front end and how it can interact with your RESTful API. So here we're going to create a schema, roughly give you an idea what just by looking at a schema, you'll get a general overview of what a schema is. And we're going to then generate a API or the API documentation automatically. Have a look at some of the different tools that are available. We will just use the tool that's already available in our DRF package. So that's what we're aiming to do. So let's go ahead now and have a look at how to implement a schema and the API documentation. So I just found a new slide. So before we move into that, I'll just briefly explain a schema. So a schema is metadata that defines how data is structured. So that means in this implementation that our schema is defining how data is structured in our API. So our data being our endpoints, our endpoints are describing our data. So our schema is going to describe all the different API endpoints, the URLs that we have available, and also the HTTP re requests that it supports. So for example, in our system, we know we have an API endpoint, which outputs all of the data from our database. Now that's going to be described. We also, once we go into the graphical interface, we're going to actually be able to interact with it and actually see the data. So that's going to be beneficial. So metadata here, we're just talking about data about data. So the schema or the data in the schema is going to be data about our API endpoints and what's available, what we can do with our endpoints. So the schema generally is a machine readable document. So we can look at it and we can read it, but generally it's utilized for us to then put into another piece of software, which we can then create a user interface, which we can then interact with that schema or our data or our actual API. Okay, so let's move over to the code. First of all, we're gonna go ahead and install a new package. This is gonna be a package called PyYAML which is used to generate the schema that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and do that. So pip install pyyaml. So now we have the schema available or installed. Now let's hook this up to our project. So first of all, let's just go into the URLs here. Uh, we're gonna be utilizing the blog URLs here. Oh no, let's, um, let's use the core. Let's just go ahead and use the core. So let's add it into our URLs, into the core. So first of all, we need to just import this in. So let's just put it below there. So you can see that from the REST framework schema, we're going to get schema view. So we're gonna import that in so that we can actually see the schema here. And then we just need to add a new entry, a new path. So I'm following the Django REST framework code here. If you're wondering where I'm getting this code from. So you can see we've got a path. So let's just select a... Uh, where are we? Sorry, we're here. So we've got the path. You can see that we're going to use this path called Open API. API, Open API. So let's just change this to, yeah, let's change it to schema. So that's going to be our path. So we get schema view. So we're going to get a title. So we can define the title. This is just going to be called blog API. A description. So we can add a description. Um, API for the blog API. So we've got a description here and a version and also the name. So we're gonna be utilizing Open API Schema. So now we have this in place, we should now just be able to go into our browser. Of course, you're gonna to need to start the server. And we've got a problem. 
So that was just a problem I had in my deployment here. Uh, nothing that was affected or changed because of the settings that we've just made. So we've gone ahead and we've created the path, which was schema. So we're now going to utilize that. So we've turned on the server, it's now working. So let's just go back and go to the schema. And you can see here, it says the URI template must be installed for open API schema support. So let's go ahead now and install that. So the reason why we're installing this is this is a package which is going to help the schema develop the schema and get all the different URLs here that are required to build the schema. So we definitely need to install that. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll just run the server again and then go back to our schema URI. So we'll go back here, refresh. Now we have a schema. So I didn't want to bog you down in detail here. I just wanted to do, create a schema and just to show you that it is possible to generate a, a GUI interface or a graphical user interface or a UI interface, however you want to describe it, um, to show and interact with your existing API. And we are following some of the commands here and it's worth reading over this page here in the API guide schema to give you a better understanding of the other tools and facilities and settings and attributes that you can apply to generate schemas, give you a little bit more information about schemas and maybe if you are not too sure exactly what they are, we're just gonna have a look at a schema now so to give you a better idea. So if we go into our schema, you can see that we're utilizing OpenAPI um, this is a, a newer kind of um, format that's been adopted to generate schemas. So you can see we've got the info, so our title, the version, the description, and here you're seeing some paths. So this is why we need to install the previous package to kind of generate, help generate these paths. And you can see this path here, API token, which is a valid path in our API. If you remember, this path is for creating tokens for our JWT impl implementation. So you can see that we've got operation ID, description um, of what it is. It's coming from somewhere. We've got some parameters that we can take in um, required. Um, so if we want to build a token or if we want to get a token, sorry, from the server, we need the required um, attributes here of email and password. So you can see that some of these are actually interesting to read. And we can see that the email is going to be taken in as a string. The password is going to be taken into a string. So this is literally taking all the parameters, all the attributes, all the settings of this path or this endpoint. And it's just laying it out bare like this. So these are all the um, settings within this API endpoint. Now, reading through this, we could get a general idea of what is going on here by reading some of these things here. But this is really not for us to read. This is for the, a machine or a piece of software to read. And what we can do now is install a piece of software which would take this and wrap it up in a nice little graphical interface. And we can then interact with our API and have a look at what it can do. So let's go ahead now and just have a look at a package that we can install and to do exactly that. So at this point, we do have a few different options. Um, these are just some popular options. So Django, REST, Swagger, Swagger UI. Uh, so we'd have a look at that one, for example. Uh, DRF, YASG, and Redox. So these are some different packages that is gonna essentially take that schema and put it into a nice interface that we can interact with. So we will install one in a second, but let's just have a look at, uh, for example, Swagger. So it has a, a website here. Um, and you can see the UI that's essentially going to be created or an example of a UI. So essentially what this is going to do is going to take our schema, all the different endpoints we have in our system. It's going to make it nice, a nice graphical user interface. And then we're going to be able to interact with it. We're going to be able to actually go to our endpoints, um, actually utilize them, see what data is actually being produced and so on. And that can give us a good indication um, as a developer, what's going on with our, within our system, what we can actually do. And for those who maybe are consuming our API, because maybe we're building an API which other people can use in their development, this will give them a documentation to understand what is actually available within our API that can be utilized within their development. 
Of course, it shows others what data is available within our API, um, what API endpoints that they're going to need to do, and then potentially what attributes or parameters that they can use to manipulate and filter the data. So we're going to first start off by utilizing what we already have available within the REST framework here. And so I'm going to import from the REST framework the documentation. And this is going to provide us a, a user interface where we can interface with our schema. And here we've got import include doc URLs. So we've added this new line here. And then down the bottom here, we're going to add a new path for the docs. So we just called it uh, the path docs here. And we're going to include the doc URLs and then give it a title of blog API. So the problem here with this is it doesn't look like it plays nicely with open API. And you can see here, we're asked to install the core API instead. So before we get confused, core API, open API, these are just two things that do pretty much exactly the same thing, except for one's been more widely adopted, open API, and you can see that core API is generally used for Django REST framework still. So that's why we're being asked for core API because the Django REST framework documentation, the user interface that we can utilize that we'll see shortly, um, utilizes core API and not open API. So like I said, they do the same things and they use to describe our API services. So they're used to kind of look at our project to see what endpoints we have and then start to describe in them them and we can now put them in a documentation page where we can now view them. So I keep mentioning it, but we'll see it shortly, I promise. So let's just go back. Now we need to implement core API. So to get core API started, what we can do is first of all, just uh, create a default schema class here um, for the REST framework where we just define the fact we're gonna be utilizing core API. So let's just put that in, in place and then just pip install core API. Once that's done, let's just go ahead now and run the server and let's go and see if this works. So let's just remember the fact that we're utilizing here docs. Uh, that's our entry point for our docs. So let's go back into our code and go to docs. And there we go. So now you can see we have this graphical interface, which we can now interact with our API. So let's just quickly give you an overview of what you're looking at here. On the left hand side here is literally just a navigation bar, which I can select and it would take me to an item on the right hand side in the middle here. But you can see the main point here is that these are our, these are our endpoints. You can see we've got an endpoint for API with get and post. So that's going to list or create some items. So you can see that what I can do is I can interact. So this endpoint here um, in my system should take me to a page or a view or should collect from the database all the data that's in the database. So if I click on here, uh, we're waiting a request. We can send request and you can see, there we go. So we now have all the data that we can return from this view. So kind of gives you an indication of what data is available or a quick view into that. So if you're not using, for example, we've been using the API view where we can go in and actually see the system visually. If you remember, if we go to our um, API, we've been us utilizing this uh, visual element or visual aid here uh, package to enable us to kind of see what's going on. So if you're not using that, then of course, this could also, oh, sorry, where we were, this could also be a good idea for you to share your endpoints with your developers and so on, so we can see what you're doing. And you can see as we move down, we can interact with all these different endpoints. It gives us an idea of what parameters are expecting. So for example, here's interesting. If I click on interact, um, I can actually enter some of the different parameters. And this is obviously giving me an idea of what's expected. Um, you can see that um, the stars are indicating that it's a, a mandatory field here. And in actual fact, if you look down here, it actually tells you uh, title is required, slug is required, author is required. So these are all mandatory fields. So again, that's giving you an idea of what is needed in order to interact with this endpoint. So I don't want to keep harping on about the different benefits of this, but imagine if we did have someone developing the API and someone developing the uh, the front end, for example, obviously this could be a useful tool 
because the front end developer knows exactly what endpoints are available and what fields are required or available. And also you can see what is actually mandatory. And obviously that's gonna make it much easier for you to develop the front end, um, knowing exactly what's available in the back end, but without actually having to see uh, the code or understand the back end code. 